welcome to Fernando's Godcast, and we're here to to break down the walls. Well, what kind of walls are we breaking down, and well, uh, who who the heck am I that wants to go out here and break some walls down? So to explain who I am, I'll kind of explain who I'm not. So I ain't no pastor, I ain't no preacher, I ain't no um, deacon. Uh, I'm not even an usher. Okay, I'm just a guy who had an experience at my lowest point in my life. I had an experience with Christ, and that inspired me to just share, sto- you know, everything that He does in my life continuously does, and what He has done in my past, and share that with as many people as I can. That's who I am. Uh, we can get into more detail with that as we talk about the miracles. So today we're here to break down the walls between us and our miracle. Okay, um, and to that end, we brought uh, Sean Harrington on our, on the show here. She's an expert at miracles. Um, she's been touched by the Lord to share this uh, testimony about miracles, that miracles do still happen, uh, what they are, how they uh, tend to manifest in people's lives. So uh, we'll, we're going to welcome here, her here in a second. Um, but what kind of walls are we trying to break down? We're trying to break down religious walls that we put up in our own lives or that other people try to put up in our life. We're trying to break down psychological walls, emotional walls uh, in, that have been put up in our life. We're trying to break down uh, walls of hurt and pain and trauma in uh, from the past. And uh, I think a big part of that, uh, of what breaks down those walls are the miracles that uh, God does in our life. Um, those miracles, uh, they, you know, sometimes uh, they show up in, in in like in an instant or like over time, the way uh, my miracle happened with my healing was over time, a process. Other miracles happen instantaneously in my life. And that's kind of what I hear from people. But um, Sean, um, you know, you weren't always uh, a Christian. You weren't always uh, fascinated by miracles or even talked about miracles. So I know you were a teacher and educator for many, many years. You taught math uh, in junior high school and high school school. in high school. Um, So you were not somebody kind of predisposed to kind of pay attention to miracles or even think about miracles or take them seriously. Uh, Is that right? Or uh, what, who were you like before this whole thing happened? Yeah, that's, that's, Absolutely right. Okay. I was now. I'd been raised a Christian, so I like I would say that I was a Christian. Mm-hmm. But this idea of miracles was something I, I did not believe that miracles existed today. Okay. And I think a part of that. I mean, I'd heard, you know, I'd heard a about them, Mm -hmm. but I was very, very skeptical of anything that I heard. And I think part of that, it's interesting you're talking in the introduction about the psychological walls that we, that we put up, because I think for me, a big part of that was a fear of, a fear of buying into something that wasn't true or a fear of being gullible or a fear of being vulnerable and believing something and then, you know, having it all fall apart or having, Mm -hmm. having it not be true and kind of looking stupid. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, so I had not witnessed miracles. I hadn't, you know, experienced things in my own life. Mm -hmm. So I was just very skeptical. And as, yes, I was a math teacher in high school and just interested in mathematics, not a mathematician, but as a lay person, I would read different things and I remember reading a book on sort of a theory of of randomness this idea that Mm -hmm. you know random things happen and there's no meaning to them Mm -hmm. and it's perfectly normal for you in the course of of just all these billions of random occurrences Mm -hmm. it's normal that occasionally some of those occurrences would be Unusual. Right. And Or in math, they call it anomalies. Is that right? Anom- yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. sure. Uh-huh. So, so I believed that, and, and that, that, that is true. I mean, if you have <clears throat> a, you know, it's, it's very unusual that you would win the lottery. True. But 
if you know a million lottery tickets are bought, mm-hmm. somebody's going to win the right. lottery. So sure. that, like there is going to be that that case. Okay. So that's true, and so I was very skeptical of. I was skeptical of divine intervention, even though I believed in God. Okay. I like th- this real close relationship wasn't there. Okay. And I was very skeptical of divine intervention. Got it. Until God started speaking to me. Uh huh. And then, you know, and it took. It, then you became the crazy person. Then I became the crazy person, uh-huh. you know. At, at times I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is the greatest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I think, wow, it took, like, you <laughs> must have been, like, really, really dense because it mm-hmm. took, like, he used to talk and keep talking. Yeah. Okay, so how do you distinguish, because you said randomness does exist in the universe, mm-hmm. in math, these mathematical anomalies. If I roll a dice a million times, eventually... I'm going to get the number 666, right? Right, And then somebody will say, oh, you know, that, that means something. It's something dark. It's something evil. Mm-hmm. There's like spiritual forces behind that. But no, it was just a mathematical anomaly. You know, the universe is constantly rolling the dice. So how do you, you know, being, uh, you know, I'm, uh, having the math background, how do you reconcile randomness, mathematical randomness with a miracle? You know, it's it's interesting because I, Having an interest in numbers, God, God's so amazing. He speaks to us all in ways that we can understand. He speaks yeah. so <clears throat> personally. And one of the ways that he started speaking to me was through, through numbers. Mm, okay. He gave me a number, specifically 31. And he would direct my eyes to that number. Now... When that first started happening, it could have been chalked up to, oh, that was just a coincidence. You know, if yeah. something happens once, it could be a coincidence. It happens a couple times, you know, maybe that's still just some really crazy, bizarre, mm-hmm. that just happened. Sure. But when it's happening over and over again, like every single day, mm-hmm. then just by evidence itself, I, I would have been crazy. I mean, you talk about, okay, I've become that crazy person. Mm-hmm. Like, I would be crazy not to recognize this and say, there's something here. I see. You know? And that's just strictly by evidence alone. I see. Yeah. I like what you're saying because there is a form of craziness where, you know, we could sometimes, because I know we're creatures of meaning, we're like, I think our brains are hardwired Mm -hmm. to look and project meaning on things that there may not be any meaning there. And so sometimes when you see these anomalies, if you will, in your life, it's easy to, oh, here's, something's happening. Yeah. But um, I guess the frequency, I think that's kind of what you're getting at, how often it's happening maybe. Uh, what else, uh, other than just the frequency, like you're seeing it over and over again, was there anything else that said, no, 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 something's happening here, and I have to rethink my preconceived notions of what I think is a coincidence mm-hmm. or like what I like to call a God incidence, right. like where God stepped in, God yeah. is doing something. Well, there was the frequency. Okay. And then there were, there were other things as well. W- once this started, I, I bought into the idea that, he, yes, he's speaking. Okay. So <clears throat> I didn't – I was no longer skeptical of the fact that he did speak. Okay. But with any specific incidents, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I would think – and I, I, I still do. I'm like, Lord, is that – Okay, maybe I'm reading into that. Maybe that's nothing. Right. Okay, I'm just going to leave that aside. And if that's you, then you come back and tell me again because I'm not, I'm not sure. Sure. And over and over again, he'll he'll conf- you know if it's him, he'll confirm. Okay. Um, and that's not a test. I don't mean that as, you know, I don't that I don't believe. It's just I just want to make, I just want to make sure that mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> reading things correctly. Yeah. You know. Sure. Um. There are, you know, I mentioned the numbers, but there are other things with coincidences, ideas that, like, like he's led me before where I've had, like, a sense that I need to go, I need to go into some place, there's something there for me, mm-hmm. and I don't even know why I'm going in. Okay. Um, I've gone into a bookstore before um, with no idea, what, I'm not even looking for anything, mm-hmm. and then he'll show me this is like 
you know, that's why through you're something there. there yeah. That to like to experience that, mm-hmm. there's just no doubt. You just, you just know. Okay. Like okay, that that's that's you. There's no doubt. I see about that. Okay, but you you were a believer. You believed in God uh, before you, you um, kind of had this calling, this pull to explore miracles. Is that right? Like I believed were, in God. Okay. But it was experiencing what I would say miracles. People have different definitions of miracles. Yeah, and I do want to g- dig into that. Yeah. I think you could help us define what that means and what it doesn't mean. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I can talk about the different definitions. There's yeah. still, there's nothing, you know, people argue sure. back and forth on what those are. But for me, when God started speaking to me and I started <clears> noticing, <throat> like, so-called coincidences that were happening that I knew could not be coincidences. Mm -hmm. That's when I started believing in, when I say miracles, I could say divine intervention. Mm -hmm. I, I would use the two interchangeably. Okay. Um, as far as miracles, you know, some people have the, they, they would only put the term miracle on, an instance that happened that is that would defy like the laws of physics. Yeah. Okay. Got and it. And there are a lot of things also that that you know if you have that if you're holding to that high of a standard, which is it's great that there are people who do that, and there are, there are books out there, and there are documentaries, and mm-hmm. there are there are documented accounts of those designed to prove to you know the hardest skeptic yeah that this is really documented absolutely could not have been anything else but there are so many things that happen in our lives just frequently okay that can't be documented and can and can't be proven but when they happen to you you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's almost like a a subjective um truth to you Mm -hmm. you know it's um, can't prove it to anybody else. You know, uh, for example, the healing that I went through, uh, you know, when I first came to the Lord, uh, came back to the Lord, it's, you know, some people I tell that to believe it. And then other people, they're skeptical. Yeah, yeah but, you know, you were going to be healed anyway. And, you know, it was the supplements that you were using. You change your diet. You change your attitude. Yes, <clears throat> if you just take that and isolate any one of those things, maybe they... They did work. They did help. But God brought, I feel, God brought all of that into my life at that moment. He could have brought it before. I, I, you know, I changed. The first thing that I changed my attitude about was how I feel towards the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, before it was like I viewed him as like this hard God that um, doesn't want to help distant because of everything I did in my life. Like why would he want to have anything to do with me when I started experiencing coming back to God and going to church and, and experiencing his grace, his mercy at my lowest moment, I started rethinking, wow, he's not who I thought he was. I knew he was real. I knew he existed. I just stayed away from him for so long because I just had this hard image of God, uh, particularly as, as he deals with what we consider and what we call and what we see as sin in the Bible. I, you know, I was like, I can't approach him. There's no way. And then so once I started changing my views about God, my attitude towards God, I started being more open to him, receiving even more goodness from him. One of those being a healing. And so, and then that's when things started kind of coalescing and coming together in that area. You know, so I do believe a big part of our relationship with God is what do we believe about him? Like, do I believe this to be true? For example, some people in the church don't believe in in healings. It's not just atheists who don't believe in healings. There's people in the church that don't believe in healing. Some people are going to be healed. Some people are not. You know, you got to be content in either situation, which I get that. But, um, you know, what what do I believe? For example, you know, a church can fill up with 30,000 people, 10,000 people, 100 people, um, and then you know, everybody hears the same message, but some people stand up and they take the altar call and they give their life to God. And they go get baptized. They change their life changes, mm-hmm. and then there's a bunch of people that don't. So was was it God's intention to save everyone in that congregation? I believe it was, but it wasn't. You know, that person has 
you know, a decision to make after they hear the message. It was the same thing with my healing. I wasn't ready to receive that truth as my truth for me. Um, it was a distant truth. I believed other people could have miracles and healings. I didn't believe it for me. I had a wall. Um, a big part of that was my lifestyle. I brought it upon myself. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't taking care of myself, so I got sick. But, um, so, you know, uh, it's just connecting it to what you're saying about the um, just, uh, miracles happen in different ways, you know. And for me, it's about the right moment, you know, before, you know, before I just, I changed my mind about God, I couldn't receive that healing. But when I was ready to change my mind about God, I was now open to the healing that he was already um, giving. I just couldn't receive it. I was in a, I was in a vessel that could receive the healing, could receive that miracle at that moment until I was ready. Yeah, that's so interesting. You're talking about the, having that, that just right moment. Okay. Because God's so patient and we, we have, our, for lack of a better term, I guess our journeys or the, mm. the paths we take. Yeah. And he can be speaking the whole time. I mean, I've looked back on my life and been like, thought, oh, I think, yeah, he was speaking to me then and he was speaking to me then and he was speaking mm. to me then and I had no idea. Yes. And it's interesting that now memories will come up, like he'll just bring little memories back mm. that, seem like they shouldn't mean anything. Okay. You know? I mean, there, there are instances that, that we think of as milestones that maybe I can't remember as well, but there are these little tiny things that should seem meaningless, uh -huh. but they're not. No, now that you look back. Now that I look back, okay. little, little things that have been like breadcrumbs the whole way So he's through. been talking the whole time. Even before you were open to it, oh, he was, yeah. it was like, he was sending it your way. It's just you were, I guess your antennas weren't in tune with that. Right. You know, I, I think a big part of that is our belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what was changing in your belief systems when you started being more open to, to these miracles that, that were happening or that you were noticing? Well, it, it wasn't a conscious change in my belief system intellectually. I had always been like, I, I'd always wanted to know the truth. Mm -hmm kind of search for the truth in an intellectual way. Okay. Um, but was always skeptical just because of that. Just like you were talking before, your your view of who God is mm -hmm. and my view of who God is was very skewed. Okay. And it was, you know, I thought he was not happy with me, would be disappointed in me, mm -hmm. that he didn't really understand me. Which was a crazy. I mean, now I'm like that. What a crazy thought mm -hmm. that is. <laughs> like he created but it, it, me, but why would I think that he mm -hmm. wouldn't understand? But, yeah. and I don't think I, I don't know that I ever would have said that or mm -hmm. phrased it that way. Sure. But deep down, that was, that was certainly how I acted. It was certainly what I thought, yeah. and and sort of this fear of, well, I don't think he really knows me well enough to know yeah. what's best, or, you know, it's not. He's not going to do what's really best for me. Mm. And even saying that now, I'm like, what a ridiculous mm. notion. But yeah. but I had that, and I think a lot of us have yeah, that. It's just, that, I mean, we put up the walls, and 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 as as we grow up, what we experience in our lives, mm -hmm. um, if, if we're hurt, if we're disillusioned, like we take all of that that we see, out in the world, and it's so easy just to put that on God and think yeah. that's that's how He is too, right? And that's what I did. So it wasn't it wasn't a, a decision to change my mind about anything. Basically, what happened is my life, as I knew it, fell apart. Okay. And then I cried out to God, and once I did, then he then he started talking. Okay. I mean, very shortly after that, yeah, he started like he showed up. Not that he, mm -hmm. not that he was never there because he was. And I realized looking back, oh, like you, you knew about this moment all the way back here. Well, back before I was born, right? Yeah. But, but in thinking now about the course of my life, like it astounds me. Like mm -hmm. you knew I was going to be here way back then, and he just was patient to walk, like, let that course let that run its course yeah 
And so then he started speaking and and I was just blown away. Okay. Like this is this is real. Like this mm-hmm. isn't <laughs> this is real and it happens now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I you know, I say I didn't believe in miracles. I don't think I thought about them that much. Okay. I just, anytime I heard of something happening, I was skeptical. Okay. So it, was, it wasn't like a diehard, you know, this absolutely mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. ever happen now. It just wasn't. Very skeptical. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. Doubting. Very, very much doubting. Okay. And so, I mean, I was, it, it just blew me away mm-hmm. that, this was a real thing right. that God speaks to us, sure. that he intervenes in our lives. Yeah, uh, I could definitely see that in my own life. Uh, I think there's two ways that we build our life. One <clears throat> was the way I was building it before Christ came into my life, um, that I would craft my own life. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, would, I was very heavily into self-help, motivational speakers, and uh, success uh, authors and that whole world, you know, being in sales. When I got into sales, I got heavily into, you know, success, um, you know, building a vision, starting with the end in mind, and then reverse engineering whatever it is you want in your life back from that vision. And that was my blueprint to build my life in, in different areas. <clears throat> like you said, when all of that, the house, it was, but it was like a house of cards. Once it came tumbling down. The reason it's a house of cards is because there's so much in that equation that you can't, it's completely out of your control. What's great about self-help and, and those things that I was reading and listening to is that they do give you kind of like a blueprint of where you can make some kind of change in your life. The thing is, it's, it's completely contingent on you doing it. Everything falls on you, especially, particularly, I would combine new age with self-help. And I would always try to find the common denominators and to, cause I did believe in spirituality. Like I always had that. Yeah. I think, you know, energy comes before matter, like just in, in the universe. That's what I see right in science. So I always believe that energy is more powerful than the matter that it's contained in. So I did, I always believe that, but I was learning that and experiencing it through new age and self-help. Like the new age was like the spirituality, the self-help was like the practical, okay, how how do I implement this in my job tomorrow? How do I implement this in, you know, in building a business? The problem with new age and with self-help and from my experience after experimenting with it for years is that it all fell on my shoulders. Even with new age, the entire, (laughs) they, they frame it up and I live my life as if I controlled the forces of the universe and I could control the forces of the universe and anything. This was one of the flaws with new age, anything that that's good happening in your life. Well, you manifested that you did that, you know, by your positive vibration of your thought and the way you feel, if you think something long enough, you hold the thought long enough, you're going to tend to emotionally vibrate at a certain frequency and then you'll attract whatever, frequency you're on there and so they said you can control this is how it was sold to me you can control the forces of the universe the problem with self-help well really new age is that they never want to take responsibility and i wouldn't want to take responsibility for all the bad stuff that happened in my life well what was that well that had to be according to the theory i i did that i manifested that so you spend the entire day trying to manipulate and control not only your own life but now pull the strings of the entire universe to come to your help and to, ah, I need to do this and I need to do that. Well, I need to. And so the whole thing fell apart for me because it was just too much. Yeah. Like I shouldn't be trying to govern the universe. No, which is just mm-hmm. so, it's so the opposite okay. of, of just like surrendering your life to mm-hmm. Christ. Yes. Because then it's like, because I do not want to control the universe. There right. would, I, I really would I, just I thought I wanted to for a while. <laughs> that <would laughs> I guess that's a male good. ego, even though a lot of women are into new age and they love it. But it appealed to me as a man, like, yay, I get to control the universe. And here's this book on all the levers and buttons I can push. Oh, yeah. I did a poor enough job trying to control <clears throat> my own life. Oh, yeah. like to could try to, con- no. Yeah. yeah, that's, and that's a way of looking at things too, that if, if the greatest 
thing you can see is yourself and your own power. Mm. Like what a what a pathetic universe that is. Yeah. You know. Um, uh, but why do you say that? Because then if I'm the most powerful thing there is, there's nothing more, (laughs) like, that's it, that's it, Uh you know, that's, that's, I mean, that's, you see, um, that's very sad, like, thank God, there's, there's, there's more, there's more, yes, and there's so much more, and so to, to know that, to know that there's a God who created me, and created the universe, Mm. and loves me, like infinitely more than I could even imagine Mm -hmm. and, and takes care of me. There's a freedom in that. That's just unbelievable. That's what I I found that in Christ, letting go of the burden of having to control the forces of the universe. According to um, new age, these new age theories, I could leave that in God's hands and start little by little. It took time because I was in the habit of doing that. So little by little, God would take my hands off of the the control panels and he would just have me do my part. Mm -hmm. Well, what's my part and what's his part? Well, you have to discover that. You realize it by making mistakes. You know, go into this venture, this relationship, this friendship, this business, this church, this group, you know, knowing that you can only do your part. And sometimes you ain't even going to know what your part is and you ain't going to know what I keep saying eight. The New York is coming up. Mm-hmm. You you are not going to know what your part is, and you're not going to know what my part is until you explore, you make mistakes, and then I'm going to reveal to you, show show you what is your part and what is not. And I've, then, gotten, go oh, I'm so, I, I've gotten mm-hmm. that, that idea of not knowing where to go. It, mm-hmm. It's awesome if there's a clear directive mm-hmm. and like, all right, I'll obey that. That's And then whatever happens, it's like this is like, Lord, this is your ball game. Sure. You, you you set me clearly on this path. So Mm -hmm. whatever happens, this is you. Yeah. And either way, whatever happens, like (coughs) whatever happens, it's just such a tremendous comfort. Even Mm -hmm. if something happens that you weren't expecting Mm -hmm. or not really happy with, it's like, all right, I know you've still got this because I know you spoke. So we'll just keep going this way. It has bothered me. At times when I haven't, you know, something I haven't known for sure. Okay. But what's given me comfort with that is, um, is the verse that, that uh, the Lord orders our steps. Okay. So at those times, like I've just prayed, okay, I, I think I'm going to do this. And if you don't want me to do this, make mm-hmm. sure you tell me you don't want me to do this. Right. But otherwise, just don't let me screw up. Right. And I just trust that you've got me. Right. And that's been a huge help whenever I'm not as aware of something he's saying. Yeah. When it doesn't seem as clear, I know that he's still there. Okay. And that that takes um, experience too, because when I first started this walk with the Lord, it would be really hard for me because I was so in the habit of trying to control the outcome in my life and different things. And now where I had to take my foot off the pedal And then my brain said, well, then how are you going to get to that outcome that you see in the Bible that, you know, God wants to bring you there? You want to be there, too, in this particular area. And I'm speaking in generalities, not because I don't have specifics, um, and I'm not directing this towards you, but to people who are listening, is so that you can apply your own, you can fit your own story into this. That's kind of why I like keeping it as general as I can. So everyone can kind of just uh, project their own truth, their own story. To, to this uh, theory, this concept that the Lord uh, is kind of revealing here. And so I would um, have to take my foot off the pedal. and But then my brain says, well, how are you going to get to that outcome? And then so that's where I had to rethink, well, whose hands am I in? Am I in my own hands by virtue of new age and controlling the forces of the universe? Or am I in the hands of the one who set, set forth, uh, set into motion those laws of the universe that are real, that are true, but he created them, whatever they are. And I'm in his hands. And is he good or is he not good? Is he there? Does he exist? And is he good or is he not good? And he's always kind of trying to reteach me that, yes, I'm there and I'm good. And like, I love what you said about when things 
don't go well, when things go bad, New Age has really, for me, it didn't give me any answers other than, well, that was your fault. You manifested that. You're going to have to remap your entire brain. You're thinking about this whole thing. And whereas in the Bible, we hear that God is directing our steps and all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those that are in Christ. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Like, it's all good at the end. Like, even from the beginning, it was all good. Everything God created was good. It was good. It was all good. And so, yeah, I love what you said about that. And so much of the time when we, like, we talk about miracles, what, you in the Gospel of John, he doesn't use the word miracle at all. Okay. He uses the word sign. Okay. And miracle, that's what they are. They are signs. And then then you mentioned... My, I'm, so, I'm going like I have three different no, thought go trails it. going go for it. right now. <laughs> so. Trying to figure out which one do I go to. Um, they are signs, and and so often, I say so often. I think maybe all the time, uh-huh. but they're used to build faith, to build trust, to get us to to recognize mm-hmm. just what you're saying that God is good and that mm-hmm. He is there. Okay. Um, and in some cases, they're <clears throat> hugely dramatic. I talk to people who have, you know, dramatic, what anyone would call a miracle, yeah. you know, de- defying the laws of physics miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's healing miracles that that doctors cannot explain, or um, I know a woman who was in a car accident, or car like flew off a, a, a drop off. Okay. <clears throat> and she and her daughter were in the car, and there was a, like, they literally, they, they saw someone, they saw Jesus come into the car and pull mm-hmm. them together so wow. that they would be, not be killed. Mm-hmm. So there are those huge, dramatic, dramatic miracles. But then that divine intervention that just happens over and over again in small ways okay that's no less important as far as building faith okay and i've heard so many different stories and you're talking about the keeping things in generalities and with mm-hmm. all of these stories there are always there are these parallels and there are mm-hmm. these there's these things to pull from them yeah regardless um signs the gospel of john calls them signs and it's interesting when we talk about biblical miracles. Well, if we go back to the Old Testament, we think about the parting of the Red Sea, mm-hmm. huge deliverance miracle, or we yeah. talk about the walls falling at Jericho. Yeah. But the entire time the Israelites were in the wilderness, there was manna from heaven right. every single day. That after, you know, every single day for 40 years, that probably seemed pretty commonplace after a while. But that was no less a miracle. Yeah. What I love about what you're saying, um, when we think of the word miracle, I think the first thing it conjures up is parting of the Red Sea. And some people that are familiar with it is the the fall of the walls of Jericho, things like that. Very super dramatic, Mm -hmm. mainly the parting of the Red Sea. Those are obviously external miracles. But what about... that break down external walls. What about the internal miracles that we need right now every single day? The walls that are keeping us from our internal promised land that we know, we see, we can envision, we see other people experiencing a particular lifestyle or a particular way of experiencing life. And we so want that too in our life. And there's this huge wall between us and that that what I call like these internal mir- miracles and these internal walls. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what can you, you know, people that are listening now, how much more important are the is the internal miracle that we need versus the external miracle, the signs that John called? What and what is it pointing to? What what are those, what are those external signs and miracles, pointing to really? I, that's. Wow, what's when, an when awesome I say what it's po- pointing to, meaning like pointing to for us. Yeah, I think the external signs. It's so interesting you say that because I I've noticed definite internal miracles and how 
God has come in and changed me. Yes. I think the external miracles, um, those are signs. And I, in many cases, they're for people who, you know, have that skepticism mm -hmm. or, or a lack of belief just as a, as a sign to say, yeah, God is real. He's here. Okay. He's here to help. I see. And then in my case, I would say hearing those, having things externally happen mm -hmm. that were initiated by God, not that everything's not initiated by God, but having those specific things happen that I can look out and say, okay, this hap this wasn't just me. This wasn't like this happened. Right. I have something <clears throat> tangible um, to point to. Those opened me up to the reality that God does speak, that mm -hmm. he is intervening in my life. Okay. And it made me more, I don't know if sensitive, I guess sensitive is the word. Can't think of a better word, but made me more sensitive to the fact that he did speak and made me able to hear him internally more. I see. Okay. Because I didn't hear internally, you know, if he spoke to me in my spirit, I didn't, I'd never, that had never happened. I'd never been aware of that okay. in the past. But after seeing these external things that I can't explain, okay. that, that, that oh, there's that's no denying yeah. because they, they come from outside of me, then I become more open to, oh, and he's speaking inside too. And I become more comfortable with that. Yeah. And more comfortable with trusting that because it's every bit as real, but I may not have something to, external to hold on to, yeah. to point to. And it's not, um, it's not provable. Is that yeah. a word? Yeah. Um, to anyone else. It just, that's more. Okay. Okay. Uh, it brings me back to the story of parting of the Red Sea. That's a great template, a great metaphor for this whole conversation. Um, there couldn't have been an external miracle until Moses had an internal miracle happen. So, and the only way, hey, if I need a miracle, it's probably because I'm in a bad situation, mm -hmm. a huge wall, a huge giant of a problem a huge giant enemy that I view as an enemy coming against me, my life, my livelihood, my family, my health. There's something completely, oh, that's the other thing that God does. He's, he allows in this life, in our life, um, all of these obstacles, these challenges, these Goliaths, if you will, that attack our life, our health, our family, our business, to let us know, to remind us that only he can do it. That it's a sign that points to him that, hey, you're not going to be able to do this. Yeah. No, I can. I can do this. And I can, you know, visualize. I need to visualize more. I need to, you know, lean into these laws of the universe more. I need to do more uh, whatever, you know. N and then you come to the realization, no, like there's nothing I can do. No, but there, you can do this and you can take action. You can get advice and you can get somebody to help you. What? What happens when all of that, you've tried all of that, you've done all of that, and then what? I'm either going to die or I'm going to get a miracle. That, like God sets it up in such a way, or life does, mm -hmm. and God is just waiting for you not to have to be in that situation. But, you know, I know for my life, I've spent so much time away from God that that was the only thing that was going to... I, I set myself up to either I was going to die or I was going to believe. I, my back was against the wall, and I, I had a choice to make. And then I, that's when I remembered the name of Jesus. I, and that's when I started calling on his name, and things started happening. The miracle, the external miracles, the signs. And then I had to rethink and re change my mind about God and about... But I think that's... The, the miracle had to happen internally first. Yeah. And so, like, that Red Sea keeping me, or that wall keeping me from, you know, my freedom is there to, one, show me that there's nothing I can do. And I know, like, um, secular people hear that, like, there's a lot you can do. Yeah. But there's situations in life where there's nothing you can do. Nothing. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, what happens when you get cancer? Well, you can start radiation in this. Okay, but it's terminal cancer. Pancreatic cancer, like that story mm-hmm. in, in your book. Pancreatic, what do you, it's a death sentence. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do. So you're either going to die and, and just, because that's a reality too, you know. You, you know, science, you know, biology is saying you're probably going to die from this. Or, you know, rethink God and rethink, you know, what, what the possibilities are with divine intervention, with a miracle. Mm-hmm. Is there miracles? And that's, uh, he totally does that. Mm-hmm. He sets, I, I'm not saying no, he sets, like you said, mm-hmm. life will set things up yeah. <laughs> for this. Yes. But that he does completely work miracles and, and they are signs. And I like the word signs. Yeah, me too. And I've thought, you know, I had this thought once, I'm like, this is, you had been so into to miracles and miracle stories and writing all of these. Mm-hmm. And at one point the thought came to me like, wait a minute. You know, we, we want miracles and we're going after miracles, but miracles are just signs. Wouldn't it be great if we were at this place of faith where we didn't need the signs, where we yeah. just accepted that, yeah, the divine intervention happens and God intervenes and we just are surrendered to that. Yeah. And it's not that we need a sign anymore. It's mm-hmm. just we just know God intervenes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's not that the... Same things wouldn't happen, but we think about them in different ways. Right. That this is just how he operates. This is just what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's where he's trying to get us to, all yeah. of us. Uh, and some of us are farther along in that uh, acceptance that, hey, there's, two, there's always two truths at play. There's the truth of the facts, but the truth of the facts is not the truth that's going to set you free. Right. It's the truth in reality. Uh, in, in the natural, but then there's the truth that's going to set you free, which is the truth that God declares in, in his word and his promises. And what he says about that particular situation, he's always trying to get us to believe. Because if we can believe, you know, that there are miracles that, you know, he He is good. He wants to help me. Um, and that he is good and intervenes, mm-hmm. and that, which doesn't mean that we don't experience suffering because we do, and mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that what we want is necessarily what we're going to get because right. there is there are things that we just don't understand yes. that are greater. So, so it doesn't discount, or I mean, there's no thought here that, again, that we could make something happen the way we want it to happen. Right. Um, but he is good mm-hmm. regardless, and ultimately... He has us. Yes. Yeah, I think um, he was with Moses in the Red Sea. He was trying to uh, deposit and implant a seed of the miracle inside of him. And I know he, he did that for my life, too. He wanted a, he didn't want me to be dependent on circumstances, that I need a miracle. Because now I know I'm established in that truth that God is good, God is real, he's going to help me circumstances can change. There could be a wall. There could be a Red Sea. Hey, if there's a Red Sea between me and where God wants me to be, my, where my destiny is, he's going to part that Red Sea. And if that's he doesn't good. part the Red Sea, then that's not where he wanted me to be. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, it was like, no, if I had this vision in my head of the way I wanted my life to be, I, it had to be that way because it was always a straight line. But with God, he tends to meander around to get us to come to a place of believing that he's going to get us to where he knows, he knows us well enough to your point earlier. I don't know if I could trust God well enough to want to meet my needs because maybe his idea of what I, my, the way my life should look and mine is completely different. Mm -hmm. But once you get to know him more, you realize it's really the same thing. Like the desires that you have in your heart, he, those are the desires in his heart. The question is, what tools are you going to use to get there? Mm-hmm. Like Adam and Eve goes back to the garden. You know, God's desire was for them to have knowledge, to have all the knowledge and, and to be like God. But he had w- w- a different tree for that. He had the tree of life for them to be like God. It's not the tree of this knowledge of good and evil. Satan told Eve, once you eat of this tree, you're going to be like, you're going to have the knowledge of good and you'll be like God. Right. And there's so much meaning to that. Like religion offers us that. Hey, you want to be like God? Follow these steps. Follow these rules and regulations, and you'll be like God. 
Well, no, there's no way you can be like God doing that. You need the tree of life. You need Christ. You know, his, he makes you like God. And so I, I think that's part of the journey is him making us more like him. So I have a mm -hmm. question because yes. this is what, what's happened in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk about you know, leading your life the way you want to lead it yeah. before. And I did the same thing and thought, you know, this is what I want and this is what I, you know, this is how my life's going to go. Mm -hmm. And have come to the realization that not only did that not work, what he actually had in mind for me was so much better, like so much more what I really wanted yeah. than what I even tried to get sure. on my own. So if you felt that same thing, you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, you totally know yes. me way better than I know myself. <laughs> right. It's true. Um, I think what God has done since I've given my life to Christ, it's uh, the way he's crafted my life and the way I've allowed him to craft my life is infinitely better than the way I could have crafted it before. Uh, mainly internally. I'm not talking about my external life, right? Mainly internally. The rest, the, tr the trust, the, you know, the adventure, like, wow, what is God going to do next? Before, it all fell on my shoulders. And that was the flaw again of, you know, new age and, and the success stuff that I was, you know, involved in. It all fell on my shoulders. So he, basically, he let me put that baggage down he takes that baggage because he his shoulders are broad enough. Mine are not. It'll crush me. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's just the internal, the internal uh, miracles that he did in my life, and the peace, the peace that I have, knowing that hey, you know, he's gonna handle. He's gonna take me where he where I need to be, and I'm gonna be happy once I get there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I found also that the more, the more I've trusted, mm -hmm. and the closer I've gotten to him. The, m the more he'll speak. Yeah. And that's just, that's just fun. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's just fun sometimes. It is. Or, or to have a thought and wonder something and ask. And then not that it's, sometimes it's answered right away, but mm -hmm. then sometimes a couple days later and somebody will walk by and yeah. like, oh, that, mm, that was you. Right. Over and over and over and over again. And then thinking, like, how did I not ever believe this yeah. when it's so frequent? But then it wasn't like that before. Okay. Like, if I couldn't see or I couldn't hear, I, I don't, you, we I don't think it. it was there. Yeah. Yeah, because if, um, you know, if there's a million dollars in this room somewhere, but they didn't tell us about it, We'd be in here, you know, uh, and it was for it was for us, yeah. And we didn't know our life isn't going to be changed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, now that you mentioned, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that, that we could have treasures hidden all around us, yeah. but if we're not, you know, aware of it, believe that they're there, looking for them, we're going to miss out, yeah. and then we're going to have to try to do it on in our own strength. Um, okay, so you know, like typical of these uh, podcasts, these conversations. They kind of, you know, like for example, right now, I want to, I want to kind of end it where we should have started. Oh, okay. But it, you they know, meander. it's fun. Yes, we meandered around. Um, so, what? How do you define a miracle? Like, what is that? And then, not to throw too much at you. And then, what was happening like in your life, like when you were finally open to this thing, like when you, hey, I'm a skeptic, and then when you turn that corner, to say, okay, wow, okay. Was there something going, you know, happening in your life that was kind of like, yeah, I need to be open to this? Or, you know, for me, like my whole life had fallen apart financially, my health, relationship, everything fell apart. Yeah. That's what made me open to it. Well, miracle definition. I think that an official definition, you know, if you Google miracle um, or looked in different dictionaries, I think an official definition is uh, something surprising and I don't, I don't know if the word's happy that they used, but, but surprising and welcomed that cannot be explained scientifically. Mm. And that certainly is, I just hear that. And I like, how do science, if that's the definition, that's their definite, the secular definition of a miracle science and scientists of all, you know, schools of science experience that with their experiments 
every single day. You know, it's something that unexpected. Hey, I don't know what's going to happen when I split the atom. And then when it happens, like, whoa, I didn't, wasn't expecting that. I didn't realize there was that much energy in the atom when we split it. And, hey, we can kind of control it and move it around. And we can create, you know, power plants and bombs and whatever. And But that is, mm-hmm. okay, okay. now let me add something to yeah. that. So um, surprising and welcomed, not explained by science, that is attributed to divine agency. Okay. So then that, mm-hmm. there's the full definition sure. there. Um, but I, when you look at things like coincidences and the odds of things happening, mm-hmm. I would say, I, I would broaden the definition. Okay. And you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'd broaden the definition, but I would, I think there, I would, Maybe I would broaden the definition Um, because I believe that miracles and divine intervention, I don't know that that's the same thing. I I believe that it is the same thing. Okay. That that's not inseparable. Okay. Um, So I would call a miracle something that is anything that's obviously divine intervention. Okay. Okay. That's Although I also believe there's divine intervention that happens that we don't even <coughs> see. I mean, if, if okay. God intervenes in our lives to prevent something harmful from happening, sure. we don't even know that. Right, like all we the know, factors we that we do know about that keep life sustained on this planet. Yes. Are those not miracles? Like, But let's say, mm-hmm. okay, let me, let me, I'm thinking here I've got, okay. okay. How about divine intervention that is used as a sign okay to increase faith okay i think that's what i would that's how you would define that's how i would de- okay say it one more time divine intervention something that is it, divine intervention mm-hmm. can't be explained away other than divine intervention welcomed a welcomed a welcome um welcomed event mm-hmm. that is divine intervention that is used as a sign to increase faith. Okay. Wow. That's a great way to end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a great way to start it, and it's a great way to I end it. I didn't have that sentence all put together. I think I would just, no, that I was just good. came, so hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. I think so it works. I think it does. Um, okay, so let us let me show the audience here your first book, okay. 31 Miracles. 31 Miracles. So uh, as I get this out, do you want to tell us a little bit about that, like, yeah, th- so I started, I wrote this. It's been a huge blessing to be given this assignment to write this. I, um, oh, do I hold that. it? Okay, yeah. I don't know. I can't see the camera. <laughs> I don't know if it's showing or not. Yeah, but it is. Okay, <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's show it again. 31 minutes. <laughs> um, when my life came apart mm-hmm. um, and God started speaking to me, I had the idea um, later, it wasn't right away. A couple years, like a few years later after that. Okay. Um, well, if God was speaking to me, then this must be happening to other people. I can't mm. be the only one because right. I was, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, talking to a bunch of people about sure. this. I don't know how much time I'm, it would go fast. Okay. <laughs> um, so I thought other people must experience this as well. Okay. And I thought the idea was mine. Well, maybe if I could find these stories mm-hmm. and get them, then it would help people to believe. Okay. Um, that's the idea that I thought I had. I was teaching school at the time. Wasn't planning on stopping that. Mm-hmm. And one night I was reading uh, in the Bible. I was in um, the Gospel of John. Okay. But I was not paying any attention to what I was reading because my mind was still on this idea of if I could find... Uh, this has to happen to other people, and if I could mm-hmm. find these stories, these miracles, divine intervention, I could get them and write them down. Mm-hmm. Maybe people believe. I don't know. Yeah. This is going through my head, not paying any attention to what I'm reading, and finally I was like, okay, stop. I like toss this idea. I need to. I'm reading this, and I don't even know what I'm reading. Mm-hmm. So let me just focus on what I'm reading. And the next thing that I read was. Um, 
and I'm paraphrasing, but um, Jesus performed many other miracles that are not written here, and these are written so that you might see and come to believe that Jesus yeah. is the Messiah. Wow. And so when I read um, that, I'm like, another that's mathematical exactly anomaly. what I've been thinking yes. the whole time, and that was not what mm. I was reading up to that point. Sure. But it, that was just one of those things that, that happened. But it's been huge to, you know, at, coming from a skeptical mindset, mm -hmm. to be given this assignment, and these stories it just came to me. God, God sent them different people, different stories, and how they came. Mm -hmm. But um, to listen to them and to be able to listen to all these other stories, it boosts my own faith. Yeah. I mean, I hear from God, but at the same time, those doubts come in, and to hear other people yeah. talking and giving those stories, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, how, that's totally how he works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love, uh, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm listening to the audio version of your book, mm -hmm. I love the accents, oh, the little accents you, you do. Uh, she, you did an Argentinian accent. I tried. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> tried. That was really good. <laughs> and uh, you were having a conversation between the Argentinian guy and his friend, and uh -huh. they were going back and forth. And it was like, wow, she's really good at these at these accents. Oh, thank you. That I was try. fun. I wonder. Like, it was fun to do, but then mm -hmm. I wonder. Ooh, I don't. I hope they're somewhat accurate. No, they were good. They were good. Um, so I have a gift for you. Okay. Uh, and then also, when is your next book coming out? And wh what's that? What's that? I am like? three quarters of the way through the next one. It's another 31 Miracles. I don't know what the subtitle will be. Something to okay. distinguish, but it's the same thing. 31 mm. Miracle Stories. Yes. True stories. About three fourths of the way through. And it should be by the end of the year. I don't know. Okay. I don't have a specific date set, but okay. by the end of the year, it should be out. Okay, maybe we can get you back on here, and we can kind of talk about awesome. wh how what this was like compared to your new book. Um, and then here's now this gift to anybody else. It would be very offensive, oh, and they're like, you, the "What are you toy? giving me? What like, you really? Me? Is this how you value me?" But um, I'll put it up here for the camera. To anyone else, this little penny here would have no meaning and you'd be offended and you'd walk storm out of here and you'd never talk to me again. <laughs> but why is this not offensive to you? Do because you want to share? You want to end the story here? I am right where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that. This is um, first chapter mm -hmm. in the book. It's called Exactly Where They're Supposed to Be. Okay. And one of the stories in there is there's a, a man and his daughter, his wife yeah. has died. Yeah. And he's with his little girl. She's in, I want to say second grade at the time, second or third grade at the time. Um, but her mother always would would tell her if she finds a penny lying on the ground, mm -hmm. then you're exactly where you're supposed yeah. to be. And at her mother's funeral, she got up and she spoke and she um, – told people this and ended up handing out pennies to yeah. everyone who was at the funeral. But then she and her dad, after a, um, he came to pick her up from school, she was very upset. She brought a, something for show and tell and it got broken. And it was just, it was one of those things where something happens that's disappointing and it just pulls all the hurt from all mm. the real hurt out. Yeah. And she's crying and he's crying and, and they walk to the, to the car mm -hmm. And there on the sidewalk mm -hmm. are these two brand new pennies. Wow. Um, just as Guys, you have to read this book. It's incredible. It's going to build your faith. It's going to inspire you, whether you're, you're a skeptic or not. You know, a skeptic, a former skeptic so. wrote this book. So um, it's a great journey. Um, uh, you know, I would, you know, if you need a miracle right now, if there's a wall between you and uh, the, the type of life that you think that, you know, that you believe that you should be living, you should be experiencing, and there's this wall, and you need a miracle, you can have your miracle. You know, like Sean was saying, it's just being open to it, is rethinking, like, is, is God there? Does he exist? Is he good? Is he bad? How bad is he? How good is he? You're going to come into a situation where nothing you can do with your hands, with your feet, with your intellect, with whatever God has given you, um, whatever gifts and talents you have, that you're going to be able to reach where you're trying to reach. It's always beyond our reach. Um, and the reason for that is, is because we need a God. We all need a God in our life. If you don't think you do right now, you trust me, you will soon. And when you are in that situation, it's okay. 
Uh, if you're in that situation now, he's not going to reject you. If you f- reach out your hand, just call in the, the name of the Lord. You will be saved. He will reveal himself to you. He will extend his. No one was more of a sinner than I was when the Lord received me as his own. And so, you know, there's a scripture that says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So he didn't, you know, Jesus didn't come to this earth to call people who are holy and um, trying to make them, right, you know, more holy. No, it's, he came for the, the worst of the worst. And so, well, now, if you don't think you're the worst of the worst, you know, just give it a little time. You'll realize that we all are. We've all made huge mistakes. We've hurt people we're, or we're continuously hurting people, and we need a God to intervene internally first and foremost. And Christ can do that for you today. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? I, that was awesome. I think that's fantastic. I love okay. what you're doing here. Okay. This is great. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. 31 miracles. It's soon to be 62 miracles. Did I do the math right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Well, you know, tune in next time. Thank you. Thank you.